I'm gonna be honest, when I was trying to think of what content I wanted to make for his channel, I really didn't think it was going to be Minecraft bookbinding, but here we are. Hello, yes, I actually returned for a second video, but this time I have TikTok clout, apparently. So this all started when a while back I posted about how for my bookbinding class, my college level bookbinding class, and I explained that for my project I was going to make a Rambo memory book and I made my whole design and I posted that on there, not really expecting much. And then within the first 24 hours, I had gained 10,000 followers from that one video alone. And now up to this point, 18,000 people have gone bookbinding pog apparently. I did get a lot of people showing interest in wanting to make the books themselves, so this that's what I'm doing today. I'm going step by step on the process of how to make the book to make it easier for anyone who wants to follow along at home. Before we get to the video, this is a super new channel, so if you end up liking the video, please consider subscribing. It's free, it only takes a second, and you can unsubscribe whenever you want in case you Decide that you hate my future videos, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Starting out, I knew that I wanted to have all the text from Rambo's memory books in this book because what would be the memory book without the memories, as much as Rambo would love to forget them. So getting started, the first thing I did is I went into InDesign and basically copying and pasting the text from the wiki and rearranging and designing it to look like it was handwritten by Rambo. I added a ton of little stuff, like ghost for writing the book and dream writing in the book, and a bunch of little Enderwalk snippets. And I did this just to make the book a little bit more fun. And yes, what everyone's been asking for in my TikTok, the download link for the files is going to be down in the description. It's going to be pay what we want, so if you want it for free, just go ahead and enter that. I guess you could give me like a dollar or something if you wanted to, but no, that'd be crazy. Unless. No, no, don't feel pressured. I'm doing this. <laughs> Now, if you're making this book, you could just do blank pages for the inside if you wanted to use it for like a personal journal for yourself. If you do want to print out and use these pages for your own book, please do not skip the next part because there's a specific way that you have to print them. So for those of you new to bookbinding, this is going to be a multi-signature book. What a signature is is a group of sheets of paper that are folded and then stacked together to make the pages. For this book, we're going to be doing a four sheet signature. So each signature is going to be a total of four sheets but folded together they're going to make 16 pages. So in order to print this out in the right order there's this thing called text setting. Luckily you can use Adobe Acrobat Reader which has a free version that you can use. After you have it downloaded you're going to open the Rambo book print files and all you're going to have to do is go to file print and then from there you select pages and select the page range as 1 through 16. Select booklet if you have a double-sided printer, make sure that both sides are selected and then you can go ahead and print. If you don't have a double-sided printer, you're going to have to do this in like two steps. You're going to go and select front pages only and then go and print them. Then after they're done printing, you're going to reverse the order of pages and re-enter them into the printer. With the same range of pages selected, hit the back side only one. After you're done with the first signature, just change the page range to the next 16 pages. So for this one, it would be 17 through 32. And go ahead and do that for the rest of those that are on the screen. I know this sounds like a lot, but once you do one or two, it should make sense. And the written instructions are going to be included as well. In total, you should have five different signatures printed at the end. Now that I have the five separate signatures printed, I align the edges and then I'm going to fold down the middle. I'm using something called a bone folder, but you can use a finger or really any straight edge to do this. Then I continue and do this to the other signatures as well. The content for Rambo's memory book only really fills out about five signatures which would actually make a pretty thin book, so I'm going to be adding another seven signatures that are all just blank sheets of paper. That way the book overall will have a much more thicker size. And will also give some more room to grow as Rambo adds on pages in the lore. Next, I'm going to take the top signature and I'm going to mark a spot in the middle and then mark three one inch segments on each side. Using the top signature as reference, take a straight edge and a pencil and just run it along all the signatures the mark where the holes will be. 
This will make sure that all the pages will come out straight when sewed together. For the next step, you can either use a cutting mat or some cork board, and you're going to lay down each signature. Take a simple thumbtack. You're going to take the thumbtack and you're going to push it through each mark on the crease. Continue and do this for each hole on each signature. Make sure you keep all your signatures in the same order and facing the same direction. Now it's time for your sewing. Threading up a needle and tying a knot at the end. Taking the first signature, I'm going to thread my needle through the top hole on the outside. Then I'm just going to weave it through the next hole and do the same thing for the rest of the holes on the signature. When I get to the end, I'm just going to loop it the other direction. Once at the top of the signature, go ahead and tie a knot. Try not to get your thread caught on fake plants like me. Go ahead and finish up the knot. Push your needle through the top hole to the outside. You're going to flip the signature so your front page is face down and you're going to take the next signature, making sure it's facing the right direction, and enter through the top hole. When you get to the second hole, you're going to thread your needle under both sides of the same hole of the previous signature. And then you are going to thread your needle back through the same hole. You are going to continue and do this for all the holes on the signature. Once you get to the end, pull it through and loop it under as well, and then grab the next signature and thread through the next hole. On this signature, you're going to push your needle in between the previous two signatures, pull it through, and then loop it back around, and then re-enter in the same hole. And this is how you're going to be doing it for the rest of the holes on your signatures. Once you get to the end, you're going to loop it around and you're going to put it in through the next signature like before. And you're going to be doing the exact same thing you did for the previous signature on the rest of them. Now you have to do this for every signature, so I really suggest having a stream on in the background while you're doing this. This can take a while if depending on how many signatures you're doing. Since I'm doing 12, it took a little bit of time. While sewing your signatures, you're, you're probably going to run out of thread at one point. When you start getting to the end, just stop what, on whatever signature you're doing and tie a knot. And then trim off the excess thread. Then you're going to thread up another needle, and, and on this end, you're just going to tie it to the previous knot, and then continue sewing. Once you get to the last the hole on your last signature, you're going to tie another knot on the inside. And here we have our fully sewn text block. Next up, we're going to be giving the pages a weathering effect. For this, I just brewed up a little coffee. A sad note, please do not drink the forbidden book coffee. It won't be good. I'm taking a sponge and I'm just dabbing it along the border of the page. Try not to get too close to the spine just because there are holes in the paper and you don't want to get it too wet because then they might start ripping. And you have to do this for all the pages, so I definitely would suggest having a podcast on the background. Like now, I have just Roll With It playing. Just assume that I have that on in the background this entire project, honestly. While you have the coffee out, you're going to want to stain two extra sheets of paper as well. These are going to be used later for our cover pages. Once you are pleased with the look of your paper, you can set it out to dry. This is going to probably take a lot of time. You can try and use a hairdryer to have it dry quicker, but honestly, this didn't help too much for me. Mine took a full 24 hours to dry. It's just something you gotta be patient with. But once it's dried, it should have a nice settled brown color to it, and also the pages should be nice and warped. So there's this thing in bookbinding called like a book press, and you use it to press your pages and so that they all stack together. But I don't have that. So I'm just going to use a book to press it and also like five pounds worth of coins. So if you have any like textbooks or anything, they're finally useful. While the pages are pressing, I push the edges of the spine in to try and give it a more curved shape. And then taking some PVA glue, which is mostly just any like acid free white glue and give a coat along the spine. Once that layer dries, go ahead and go over it with another coat. 
And after a couple of hours of being pressed, it should look something like this. A lot more compressed and flat. Going back to the two extra sheets of paper, we're going to fold it over and crease each one. Then taking a brush, dab on a little bit of glue along the sides of your front page. And then you're just going to press this down along that. And do the same to the back page as well. Guess what? We gotta press and let it dry again. Since this is going to be one book compared to Rambo's canonical four books to represent the missing memory book, all these pages that are a jumble of ender walk, I'm going to place a cutting board under e each page and take an X-Acto knife and make a couple of jagged cuts along the edge. That way it will look like it is torn out and missing for the missing memory books. Do a little bit of extra tearing as you see necessary. So for the next part, you're going to need a board. This can really just be any piece of sturdy cardboard. Mine, I later grabbed from like a back of a sketchbook. Then for the cover is going to be eight and three fourth inches and the width is going to be five and three eight inches. That way the cover will have a slight overhang past the text block. Using a box cutter and a straight edge, I just do uh, multiple passes over each line. Now that you have the front and the back cover, you can test it out on your text block and it also looks like a forbidden ice cream sandwich as well. Using this fake black leather fabric that I found at my craft store, placing both the front and back cover onto the fabric and leaving two inches between the boards for the spine. Mark out a one inch border around each board. Cut around your marked border and using PVA glue, glue your boards in place on the fabric. On each corner, you're going to draw a diagonal line just a little bit from the corner of the board and then cut along the diagonal line. On the top and bottom flaps, add some glue and then fold it over onto the board. After you have these pressed down, do the same thing to the side flaps as well. And now we're done with the base of our book cover. Now moving on to the belt. Taking another sheet of leather fabric, mark out these four oval shapes and cut those out. You're going to pair them in two and then you're going to glue one side of them and then smush them together to make one double sided belt. And to finish off the edges, I just used the black sharpie. If you can guess by now, I'm definitely not a professional, but this, this works. Now to add the detail. So for the gold foiling, I'm going to be using my Cricut. I can just upload my design onto its design studio, then it's going to cut out this gold iron-on foil for me. So obviously I know that everyone isn't going to have access to a Cricut, but there's a ton of different ways that you could go about adding gold to this. You could brush it on using metallic paint, you could use gold metallic paint pens. I know that there's fake gold leaf if you wanted to try that out. Or you could just use metallic sharpie if you wanted to. I'm going to give a template of my design, you don't have to go that detailed if you're using different methods. Or you can, it's really up to you. Just with, with the tools that I have, I wanted to show you how I would get the best results. And yes, we get the satisfying gold peel as well. And with this, I'm just following the instructions of the material. I'm trying iron-on for this book. Actually, my TikTok series, I used the adhesive foil instead. I thought this one would be a little bit more stronger, but honestly, the whole time I was just worried about melting the leather in general. So honestly, if I were to do this book again, I would go back to using the adhesive foil instead. Some of you may have noticed that these are not the proper Rambu Enderwalk symbols. I actually modified them a little bit where it's kind of a combination of the English leathers and then the Enderwalk symbols. The reason why I did this is I thought it'd be cool to do this that way people wouldn't need to know Enderwalk to be, uh, be able to guess that it was Rambu's name. For the belts, I found these magnetic clamps at my craft store in like the purse making section I believe. And all you gotta do for these to install them is that they have these two little prongs on the back, so you just mark where you want them to go, and then using a box cutter or an X-Acto knife, you cut two holes, that way you can slide in the two back metal bits, and then fold the two metal parts on the back so then it stays in place. And then do this again with the belts and the other side of each clamp. 
finally we can start assembling the book. Coating the place for your spine on the cover with PVA glue. Make sure it's spread out nice and even. Align your text block and press it down on the glue. Next, on the front cover, you're going to take even more PVA glue. Yeah, a surprising amount of book binding is just a whole lot of glue. Make sure that you don't put too much here, that way it won't warp the page too much. And then taking the front cover page and smoothing it out onto the cover making sure that all the corners are secure. To make sure the glue doesn't seep through to the other pages of the book, take a piece of printer paper and then also a piece of wax paper and put it in between the cover page and the text block. And then repeat this process on the back cover as well. And then for one last time, we're going to press the book again until it dries. After the book dries, I go ahead and add the gold detail to the spine, now that I can visualize better where it's going. Place on the buckles and then mark where I want them to be glued onto the back and taking even more PVA glue, just press that down where I want them to be. Next, I found these rhinestones. I'm going to take one red and one green rhinestone to make sure I stay on Rambu brand. Then I'm going to take this aluminum gold wire and form it around the gem. The best way I found to do this is take a longer amount of wire and overlap it so it's easier to work with and then take some scissors and cut it where they overlap. And then you should end up with a pretty close circle to the gem and it makes a nice finish for it. Now, for the gems on the crown, I wasn't able to find any smaller rhinestones, so this is how I made my own. Using the aluminum wire, I wrap it around a pencil, and using the same method as before, create three little rings. Taking a red sharpie and a green sharpie, then I cut off a bit of aluminum can. If you're doing this method, be super super careful, these things can get sharp. I'm going to draw just a space with the red sharpie and then a smaller space with the green sharpie. Placing my rings on top of that, and then, very professional, I take some hot glue, I fill it until one blob fills up the ring, and then trim off the excess aluminum. And it honestly creates a super convincing gemstone. For the belt buckle, I place where I want the ring to go, fill it with hot glue, and just put my gem on top of it. I honestly, I think these gemstones really just add so much to the book because it's really the only pop of color and I think it looks so cool that it looks like his eyes and all of that. And then the last part is going to be gluing on the smaller gemstones onto the crown in the middle. I use white glue, but you could use hot glue if you wanted to. And here we now have our final book. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. I had a ton of fun making it, and I hope that y'all at least had fun watching it. If people like this, I'm planning on doing more bookbinding projects in the future, and I can already say that the next project's probably going to be another, uh, another crazy journey. <laughs> so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that, and I'll see you guys next time. I, I don't have an outro. I don't know what to do. Oh, the end screen of the video. Didn't see you there. Did you know I already made another video before this where I just rant about Dreams merch for like 15 minutes? Yeah, maybe maybe Minecraft bookbinding was the better way to go. Subscribe. <laughs>